What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Spud Reacts. In today's video, Ryan Shirley is going to show us around Australia to see if this is a place where we would want to visit. And as always, be sure to check the links down below for more info. Alright, let's see what Ryan has to say. What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I recently returned from exploring down under and I want to share with you my favorite places. Oh, I gotta go back. I did not know, where was that at? Is that's really what the water looks like there? I This literally looks like the Caribbean. The Caribbean Sea for sure. I did not know Australia had this blue of water. Oh my goodness. Favorite places, so here's my Australia top 10. Australia is a massive country home to some of the world's most beautiful and diverse landscapes. From the pristine beaches of Esperance to the tropical oh island of Lord Howe, Australia is waiting to be experienced. Let's start this video off on Tasmania. Located oh, off Tasmania. of Australia's southeast coast, Tasmania is an island home to some of the country's best nature and wildlife. I spent a few days road tripping Tasmania and I was blown away by the beauty of this place. One of the main reasons I wanted to come here was to visit Cradle Mountain. It's located in the central highland of Tasmania and the area is part of Cradle Mountain Lake St. Clair National Park and it's home to some of the most beautiful scenery mm. in Tasmania. What really drew I wonder me why to the they area call it Cradle. is the wombats. They're the cutest animals I've ever seen and there was this place called Ronnie Creek where you could go on these raised walkways and we saw at least 20 wombats. I mean, it was so peaceful to hear them munch on the grass. I mean, talk about nature, ASMR. Oh my gosh, I paused it right before the ASMR. I was about to say, this <laughs> this is, um, should be like an ASMR type thing if he's saying you can hear them munch on the grass. And then all of a sudden he's getting ready to say it. That's awesome. But I wonder why they call it Cradle. And I remember the Wombats when I was younger. I would always hear that because I was from Australia. But that's really cool. Let's hear this. Now, another incredible <laughs> place funny. in Tasmania is Cape Way, located Cape on the Way. Tasman Peninsula. Cape Way is home to some of the tallest sea cliffs in the southern hemisphere. You can reach it by a 10 kilometer hike, but we decided to take a boat tour out to Cape Way. It took us about an hour to get there, and the views along the way were that amazing. water looks so Cape dangerous. Way, I was just amazed by the size of the rocks and sea cliffs, and it was such a spectacular area. After, we're going to head to the mainland to visit Western Australia. Before I came to Australia, I thought it would be feasible to road trip across the country in a day or two until I realized it was a 40-hour drive. Holy! Oh, I guess I'm in the same boat as he is. So from Sydney to Perth. I did not know, and that's not even the biggest part. There probably isn't um, from like Brisbane, like across, because this looks obviously bigger. But just go, this is 41 hours. I did not realize how big Australia was. Oh my goodness. From Sydney. The four hour flight is definitely a faster option, but if you want to do a week or two road trip, it would be an incredible drive. Now the capital of Western Australia is Perth, which is the fourth most populous city in the country. What I particularly liked about Western Australia is its coastline. The beaches are home to white sands, crystal clear waters, and kangaroos just oh, chilling Oh, did you see those? The what beaches were those? are home to white sands, crystal clear waters, what are these, like dolphins down here? Oh, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there that knows. Waters and kangaroos just chilling on the beaches. The area around Esperance is particularly beautiful. It's home to some of the whitest sand in Australia and the world. I mean, I can't believe the beauty of this place. Now, special thanks to my friend, Earthwish Tom, for sharing his footage of Esperance. He makes great videos of Australia, and I'll link his channel in the description so you I'm can check have to check, check that out. out, too. One of my favorite beaches in Esperance is Twilight Beach. It's located 10 minutes outside the town of Esperance, and it has this massive rock just off the coast that is popular for some cliff wow. jumping. Another beautiful place in the area is Cape Le Grand. It's a pristine coastline home to these untouched beaches, and maybe you'll see some kangaroos roaming around. After I never thought kangaroos would love to be on the beach i thought they were always out in the desert or something like that am i the only one who thought that i, I had no idea i just really didn't to australia center to visit the outback and when you look at australia from space you'll notice that basically all the cities are on the coast but the interior of the country is an orange desolate landscape with hardly anyone living there and that's the outback the most iconic landmark in the outback is uluru or ayers rock it's a Air massive rock. monolith I remember that. made up of sandstone. You can reach the area by flying into the nearby town of Ulara, or also by making the four-hour drive from Alice Springs. Now, Uluru is a sacred site for the indigenous Australians, and it's believed to be a resting place for ancient spirits. 
There's definitely huh. an energy there, and it's just bizarre how it sits alone in the desolate outback. I Afterwards, wonder if you're allowed to actually to go there. Brisbane. Look it on the like east onto coast. Rock. Brisbane was founded in 1824, and today it's the third most populous city in Australia and the capital of Queensland. It's a beautiful city built on the Brisbane River and has an average of 260 Ferris days well. of sunshine See? per Ferris year. Well. Just an hour from Brisbane is the Gold Coast, which is this incredible city with a huge beach contrasted with skyscrapers. If you want a more natural setting, you can embark to the Glasshouse Mountains. Located about an hour's drive from Brisbane, the Glasshouse Mountains are a group of 13 volcanic peaks. They are some of the most peculiar mountains I've ever seen. The tallest is Mount Birwa with an elevation of 556 meters. If you want to see them from the air, you can take a scenic plane tour That's to witness cool. these unique mountains. After wow. it, we're going to visit Whitehaven Beach. Regularly voted as one of the best beaches in the world, Whitehaven Beach is located on the Whitsunday Island and you can reach it by taking a boat or seaplane. The boat tour is the most affordable option and you can reach Whitehaven by departing from places such as Airlie Beach or Shoot Harbor on the mainland. Once you arrive at Whitehaven, you'll be amazed by the surrounding scenery. The sand is made up of silica, giving it its white color and when combined with the blue ocean water, it creates this swirly turquoise wow. mix that winds back into the island's inlet, and it's just incredible to look at. You can get an elevated view of the area from the hill inlet lookout. I mean, this place is on another level. Another incredible destination <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> the kangaroos. is Cape Hillsborough National Park. Now, when I imagine Australia, kangaroos on the beach always come to mind, and Cape Hillsborough is one of what? the best- What? So he said kangaroos on the beach came to his mind. It was a complete opposite. For me, I had no idea that they, I thought they were inland. I really did. in the country to see them roaming on the coast. If you want the best chances of seeing them, you can wake up around 5 a.m. to witness the kangaroos and wallabies on the beach for sunrise. I mean, it's such an incredible setting with the rising sun and the kangaroos feeding on the mangrove sea pods and seaweed. After, we're going to head back to the ocean to visit probably one of the most famous places like in heart. Australia, the Great Barrier Reef. Oh it's yeah! In the northeastern coast of Australia, isn't and this the in Finding Nemo? System in the world stretching over 2,300 kilometers. It can be seen from space and is the world's largest structure made by living organisms. It's easy to see why it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It's home to over 10% of all the ocean's fish species, and there's also plenty of whales and sharks. I mean, it would be a dream to scuba dive here one day. A potential city to access the Great Barrier Reef from is Cairns. It's located near some of the most prime coral reefs and islands of the Great Barrier Reef, and you can reach it by taking a 40-minute boat ride from Cairns. Afterwards, we're going to head up north to visit the Daintree Rainforest. Located Daintree. about a three hours drive from Cairns, the Daintree Rainforest is a combination of massive mountains, pristine beaches, and possibly the oldest rainforest in the world, which oh. began over 110 million years ago. The rainforest is home to animals such as the southern cassowary, and I particularly like the area around Cape Tribulation. I mean, it's just so scenic with mountains covered in lush vegetation. It's definitely one of my favorite places in Australia when it comes to natural beauty. After, we're going to head back to Australia's cities to visit yes, Sydney. Yes, famous Located Sydney. on the southeast coast, Sydney was founded back in 1788 as a British penal colony. And today, it's the most populous city in Australia. Of around oh, look at that. Is that a people. person? Was that a person up there? Can you see that? Oh, my gosh. British penal colony. And today, it's the most populous. Is that a person right there? Just chilling? The city in Australia of around 500 oh, people. a light? It's home to the <laughs> real famous Opera House, which was opened in 1973. I really like the beaches around Sydney. One of the most famous ones is Bondi Beach. It's located just 20 minutes outside of Sydney, and it's a massive beach and has some really cool pools alongside the ocean. Just down the coast is also Bronte Beach. It's smaller than Bondi Beach, but has its own charm. And there's this really cool public pool called Bronte Baths that you can get in if you don't want to swim in the ocean. A beautiful place outside of Sydney is the Blue Mountains. They are located about an hour and a half drive from Sydney. And it's this incredible mountain range that has a famous distinct color due to a combination of eucalyptus oil droplets from the forest combining with water vapor and dust, creating a blue hue. A great lookout point in the mountains. Well, that sounds the interesting. Sisters. It's only a short walk to the lookout and you get an amazing view of the rock pinnacles and the mountains in the background. After it, we're going to head to Melbourne, located in the state of Victoria, about a nine hours drive from Sydney. Melbourne is the second most populous city in Australia and was ranked the world's most livable city seven years in a row. There's a lot to do around Melbourne, such as taking a drive through the scenic Blackspur Forest. One of the most famous places in the area is the Twelve Apostles. Located about a three hours drive from Melbourne, the Twelve Apostles is a set of limestone sea stacks. There was originally eight of them, but one collapsed in 2005 due to the constant erosion of waves and wind. While you're there, what if you those can were actually the buildings? stacks from the boardwalk and many viewpoints. 
for our final destination, we're going to visit Lord Howe Island. Located in the Tasman Sea between Australia and New Zealand, you can reach Lord Howe Island by taking a two hour flight from Sydney. The island is just insanely beautiful. It's called the Hawaii of Australia, and after visiting it, I understand why. There can only be 400 tourists on the island at a time. And oh, another there interesting you go. fact about Lord Howe is that it's the largest island ever to eradicate all its rats, which in turn has allowed the birds and wildlife to flourish here. One of the main reasons I wanted to go to Lord Howe That's Island scary. was to visit Balls Pyramid. It's the tallest sea stack in the world with a height of 572 meters. Oh it's one of the wildest goodness. rock formations I've ever seen as it sits alone in the desolate ocean. Now to get to Ball's Pyramid, it was about an hour boat ride from Lord Howe Island. We went with this tour company called Reef and Beyond Eco Tours and it was an adventure getting there. We boated around the entire sea stack and I was just baffled by the scale of this place. I felt like Jack Sparrow discovering Aha! a treacherous island. Good we were going to snorkel in the water, but the sea was too rough, so it wasn't possible. After exploring That's what through, I was saying. The sea looks so, like, rough. Like, it would just... I don't know. If you got too close, it'd just destroy your boat. I wonder how many boats got destroyed back then. We headed back to Lord Howe Island and got some incredible views on the way. While we were on Lord Howe, we had bikes to get around, and we did some great hikes. One of my favorites was Malabar Kim's. There were some incredible views of the sea cliffs, and then we walked on the ridge line to Kim's Lookout, and we were able to get an amazing view of the full island. I mean, this place is paradise. Another one of my favorite things oh, that we did yay, on the island turtle. was snorkeling. Lord Howe is home to the southernmost coral reef in the world, so there's tons of great snorkeling spots. We went to Ned's Beach and had a great time swimming in the warm, clear waters. We saw plenty of fish and a few sea turtles. Now for sunset, I love going down to Lagoon Beach. I love that so much, the snorkeling. It brings me back to our days when I got to do that in um, Cuba. It was so much fun. It depends on, you know, the weather, if it's really choppy and it's kind of like murky water. But um, when I first started, it was absolutely pristine. I, I wouldn't say it was that pristine and clear, but it was just amazing. So I would love to snorkel here for sure. So if you wanted to check out my uh, snorkeling videos, you can go ahead and click this card up here um, and it will show you that. So let's go ahead and continue. To watch the sun light up the mountains of Lord Howe, places don't get more perfect than this island. If I had to rank this, this is definitely within top five of the places I want to go within the world. It has everything. It has the water that's absolutely remarkably clean and clear. It has the huge stones all over the place. It has the vegetation as far as the forest, like the rainforest. It has the cities. I mean, it literally has anything you would want in a place. I did not know Australia was like that. Guys, I did not know that. Thank you, Ryan, for showing me.